Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at bond retirement. This topic is covered in introductory accounting course as well as the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists. If they help you, it means they might help other people, especially these days with the coronavirus out there. Many people are relying on online lectures. Also, on my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources that will help you supplement your accounting education, improve your grades, and pass the CPA exam. I strongly suggest you check out my website. Bond retirement. What does it mean, bond retirement? Bond retirement is when the company buys back its own bond. It retires the bond. Now, one way to retire the bond is to wait until it mature at maturity. What does that mean? It means you wait until you make all your interest payment at some point the bond mature when the bond mature you will buy back the bond when the bond mature as we learned in the prior session let me just go back and show you when the bond mature whether it's a premium bond okay it matures at par value and whether it's a discount bond let me just remind you it's always the par value so if you if we wait until the bond mature we always pay the maturity value why because by the time it mature all the premium and all the discount has been amortized therefore it will mature at par value so let's start with this simple example then carry on with with our illustration so let's talk about this bond the par value is 100,000 this was a two-year bond issued in 2019 mature in 2021 it doesn't matter whether this bond was issued at a premium or a discount by the time it mature, it will be 100,000. Therefore, by the time it mature, we pay 100,000, we credit cash 100,000, and we'll debit the bonds payable, okay? Again, whether it's a premium or a discount, it will be fully amortized at maturity. Therefore, the carrying value equal to 100,000. At this point, the bond is paid and we could move on with our life. And this is a reminder that if you wait until the bond mature, it reaches, it reaches the par value, whether it's a premium bond, Notice it started at 103, but once all the premium is amortized, and this is what we looked at in the prior session, it goes back to 100,000. And whether it's a discount bond, it will go back again to 100,000. So the bond mature, uh, the bond mature exactly at par value. Now we have certain bonds that are convertible or callable. So we need to understand the difference between convertible or callable. What does it mean convertible? Convertible means the bond holder, the person that purchased the bond can convert into stocks. So rather than having the bond, you can convert into stocks. So you can convert your bonds into stocks. That's one, that's one type of bonds. So you can convert it. And when you convert it, what's going to happen? The bond is gone. You have to remove the bond and replace it with stocks. Who does this? The bondholder, the person that purchased the bond, the person that, that lend money to the company. On the other hand, we have certain bonds that are callable. Here, the corporation. So notice the difference here. The corporation, The corporation buys back the bond and when they buy back the bond you have no choice you have no choice you have to give them the bond back why because when you gave them the money the corporation told you at any point in time we have the right to call it so the bond was callable so notice here for callable remember callable the corporation buys it convertible the individual it doesn't have to be an individual it could be a co another corporation but to make it easy for you it's individual that that convert individual that convert the bond individual versus corporation okay now let's let's determine what happened when we convert a bond when a bond is converted before maturity whether it's callable or whether it's 
convertible. It means it's it converted before it mature. What happened before it mature? If the bond is a premium or a discount bond, we have to determine the gain or the loss. So when we buy back the bond, we have to determine whether we have a gain or a loss. How do we determine a gain or a loss? So listen to me carefully, because once you get this right, you know, it's it's good to go. Here, here's what happened. You have to look at the carrying value of the bond. Now, what is the carrying value of the bond? Well, the carrying value, let me go back and show you what the carrying value is. The carrying value of the bond, we talked about this in the prior session, that basically if it's a discount bond, if the carrying, if the bond is a discount bond, it's the bond face value minus any N amortized discount. And this is going to give us the CV, the carrying value. So for example, the carrying value of this bond on December 31st, 2019 was 100,000 minus 36 equal to nine. So 100,000 minus 3,600 equal to 96,400. Then six months later, when we amortize 900, it's 100,000 minus 2,700 equal to equal to 97,300. Then when we amortize another 900, it's 100,000 minus 1,800, you get the point. By the time the bond mature, 100,000 minus zero equal to 100,000. So those are the carrying value. Okay, and the carrying value when it mature equal to 100,000. This is for a discounted bond. For a premium bond, it's the face value plus un amortized premium and that's going to give us the carrying value so when the bond starts the bond has a face value of 100,000 plus 3,600 equal to 103,600 then six months later we amortize 900 it's 100,000 plus 2,700 equal to 102,700 until we use up all the premium, 100 plus zero equal to 100. So we have to look at the carrying value when we retire the bond, then compare the carrying value to how much we paid. So if the carrying value is greater than the retirement price, simply put, if the carrying value is 98,000 and we paid and we paid only 95,000 for this bond. So the bond has a carrying value of 98 and we paid 95, we have a gain of 3,000. If the carrying value is less than the retirement price, if the carrying value, let's assume the carrying value is 106, and we're dealing with a par value 100,000 bond, so keep it simple. So the par value is 100,000. So the carrying value is 106, and we paid for the bond 108, 108,000. If we paid 108,000 for the bond, we paid more retirement price. We paid more than the carrying value. We have a loss of 2000 Therefore, we have to compare two numbers, the carrying value to the retirement price. What is the retirement price? It's the cash that we paid. How much did we pay? If we pay more, we have a loss. If we pay less, we have a gain. So let me put it for you in a different format. So you compare the cash versus the carrying value. If the cash paid is more than the carrying value, you have a loss. If the cash that you paid for this bond is less than the carrying value, you have a gain. So that's not same as saying this, but maybe you can easily understand it from a cash perspective. So if you pay more than the carrying value, you're paying more than what it's worth. You have a loss. If you paid less, you have a gain. It's worth on the books, which is the carrying value. So let's look at an example to illustrate this concept. Assume a $100,000 bond, which is, that's the par value of the bond, of callable bond, it means the company can buy it, will retire it on July 1st, after the first interest payment. The bond carrying value is 104,500. Now they gave you the bond carrying value. They gave you the bond carrying value. So see, so the bond carrying value, let's put this information here. Now let's put it here. So the bond carrying value, because it's given, sometimes it's not given, sometimes you have to compute the bond carrying value, equal to 104, 104, 500. That's the bond carrying value. Now we have to determine how much did we 
pay for this bond? How much did we pay for this bond? Well, we paid a $3,000 premium. Premium means it's the par value plus 3,000. And the cash paid, and how much cash did we pay? We paid 103. Simply put, we told the bondholder, at any point in time, we can buy the bond for 103. It means we pay 3,000 premium. If we pay the bond, if we purchase the bond at 103, and it has a carrying value of 104,500, we paid less. We paid less than the carrying value, therefore we have a gain. So how do we journalize this entry? Well, first we have to debit the bond. We have to debit the bond to remove the bond. Then we have to debit the premium because the bond has a premium of 4,500. How did I know? Because the carrying value is 104,500. The bond is 100,000 plus the plus the premium, that's the carrying value. Therefore, to get rid of the bond, we debit the bond, we debit the premium. Then we paid 103. We credit, we credit cash 103, and we already determined a gain. The gain on the bond retirement is a credit, just like the gain when we did for the plant asset is a credit, 1,500. So here what we did is we, is we uh, retire a bond with a callable provision. So we paid for it, 103, it has a carrying value of 104,500. The difference is a gain. Let's take a look at another example where we convert a bond. Remember, the conversion of bonds to stocks. Who can convert the bond here? Re remember, let me just go back here to remind you that who called the bond? Who called the bond? Who bought back the bond? The corporation. Just kind of, I wanted to kind of, I wanted to revisit this. Here, the corporation. The corporation purchase back the bond. Now we're going to be we're going to be looking at a conversion. Who convert the bond? The individual. It doesn't have to be an individual. The reason I say individual to differentiate between the corporation and the individual. So the holder of the bond will convert. Okay? Why would they convert? Because they think having the stocks of the company is better than having the bond. So on January 1st, $100,000 bond of Converse, which is the company, with a carrying value of 100000 so they're giving us the carrying value here, the carrying value is 100000 are converted to 15,000 shares at $2 par value. Okay, now, if we're going to retire the bond, we have to debit the bond. So we have to debit the bond 100,000, and this bond is no discount and no premium. So when we convert, we're not going to have discount and premium for financial accounting because it's it, it's beyond the scope of this course. So for the bond conversion, first we have to convert the bond. Then we have to issue stocks. So the company took out the debt and replaced the debt with stocks. Now, how do we how do we issue the stocks? Now, you don't have to worry about this because we're going to talk about stocks in the next chapter. But simply put, the stocks has, we're issuing 15,000 shares times $2. So we credit common stock for 30,000. And anything that remaining, we credit capital, uh, paid in capital in excess of par value for the entry to balance. Don't worry about this. Again, we'll talk about this topic in the next session. I just want to show you that this conversion is done by an individual. Let's take a look at another example where you're, you will be responsible for as a student. Um, as a student. So let's take a look at this company. We have T Company issued callable bonds. So notice callable means the company can call it with a par value of 10,000. So this bond has a par value of 10,000. The call option required T Company to call a premium of 500. It means when they buy back the bond, they have to pay 10,500 in cash. Now we know the cash amount that they have to pay. Now that's right here. On July 1st, the T company exercises the call option. Exercise means they went ahead and they bought the bond. The call option is exercised after the semi interest is paid uh, the day before on June 30th. Record the entry to retire the bond under each separate scenario. So they're telling you we make an interest payment, then we retire the bond. The good news here is they're giving you the carrying value, the carrying value of 9,000. So the carrying value of nine, we paid 10,500. Do we have a gain or do we have a loss under this scenario? Well, obviously we have a loss. How much is the loss? The difference. The difference between how much we paid and the carrying value. Now, what do we need to do? We need to remove the bond. We need to debit the bond 10,000. We need to credit uh, credit the discount. So the bond, the bond and the discount, they go hand in hand. How did I know the discount is 1,000? Because look, the carrying value is 
is 9,000. It means we have a bond of 10,000 minus 1,000. And this is how I know it's 1,000 because the carrying value is 9,000. So I have to remove the bond. I have to remove the discount. I paid cash 10,500. We already know this. And we already computed the loss of 1,500. So in the, the first scenario, the bond is sold, is purchased back at a loss. Let's take a look at the second scenario. The second scenario, the carrying value is 11,000 and we paid 10,500. Here we have a gain of 500. Why? Because I paid this much, 10,500, for a carrying value of this much. The carrying value tells me that this bond is a premium bond and I have a premium of 1,000. Why? Because 10,000 plus 1,000 of a premium will give me 11,000 of carrying value. It means I have 1,000 of a premium. I have to remove the bond. I debit the bond, debit the premium to get rid of the bond and the premium. Then I have to credit my cash, how much I paid. Then I have to credit my bond retirement, which is $500. So this is how I retire a bond. Remember, it's how much cash you paid versus the carrying value. And these are two separate independent scenarios. If you like this recording, please click on the like button, share them, put them in playlist. In the next session, I would look at long-term notes payable. And please take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com, if you're looking to supplement your accounting education and or pass your CPA exam. Study hard and stay safe during those coronavirus days.